Okay, so I'm delighted to introduce back from this morning, Ruth Anibaba from Trustpilot. Um, I'll just hand over to you, Ruth. Okay, thank you, Heather. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. I'm just really going to talk a little bit more about who Trustpilot are as a company. Um, obviously, we've recently um, opened an office in Edinburgh. So I'm just going to talk a little bit more about us and sort of why we've opened an office and sort of our history to date and what we've been able to do in the locations that we're currently in. Um, so yeah, have you can move on to the next slide. Um, sorry, the next one, if that's okay. So um, in this presentation, I'm really just going to get you to know a little bit more about us, get to know what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. And then finally, of course, the main event would go through our current vacancies that we have open at the moment. So next slide, please, Heather. So this is Peter, our CEO, who founded the company in Copenhagen in 2007. Um, so recently, we've been really bringing our efforts to Edinburgh to really build out our R&D hub, um, focusing more on fraud detection. And this is Peter's sort of dream to really build out that transparency and trust with both our consumers and our customers. Um, if we just go on to the next slide, Heather. So our current management team sits across several different locations. So we have Peter who's based in Copenhagen, uh, but he does travel regularly to other offices. And then we have Steve Garland, who's currently the CTO globally of all of our offices, but it's mainly based in London and Edinburgh. Um, and then we also have some senior management in Copenhagen and also in New York as well. Next slide, please, Heather. And our main sort of organization, so the way it's organized at the moment is we have six different elements. So that's ranged across commercial support, marketing, tech, uh, product and also trust and transparency and all of these levels we need to make sure that we can build a really strong and solid organization um, so customer success and business support is pretty much under that commercial element and then we also have our marketing which is mainly focusing on customer marketing sort of demand generation and also our consumer marketing efforts as well and on the technology side, what we're building up now is our data and analytics structure. Um, also focusing on our IT operations. So we currently have an SRE team uh, that we're trying to build out a little bit more in Edinburgh. Um, so at the moment, we're looking for at least three different site reliability engineers, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about towards the end of the conversation as well. Um, so next slide, Heather. How did our organization start? Um, I'll just go a little bit more about sort of Peter's thinking behind starting an organization and where his inspiration came from. Um, next slide, please, Heather, thank you. So the I, initial idea for Trustpilot actually came about through Peter's parents. So they are obviously consumers, as we all are. And the idea was to create Trustpilot because it emerged that Peter wanted to make sure that his parents wouldn't get ripped off when shopping online. Um, and he saw that as his parents were getting older, they had started to travel more. And Peter wanted them to be able to sort of navigate that jungle of the internet and to make sure that they weren't um, sort of being ripped off at any stage. And he wanted to do that by helping others understand how businesses operate and work. Next slide, please, Heather. And so the initial trust pilot platform was established as a space where people like Peter's parents could share their experiences about services, products, companies, and so on. Um, and trust pilot is built on a base of a simple idea to basically build a free and online community where consumers can freely express themselves. Um, and although trust pilot is free, we of course do have products that we do service to clients as well. Uh, if you just go to the next slide, Heather. So as you might also know, um, there's another side of the business of Trustpilot today. Um, so Peter's basically his friend Morton, which is in this picture. So the time that Trustpilot actually came live um, and became more popular, Peter recognized that it could be more 
used to help people like Morton succeed as a business through feedback uploaded by customers. And that is how we built out our offering. So in this case, Morton had a small startup company selling canvases, like the one you see on the wall in the canteen. Um, and as a startup, he didn't have a huge marketing budget. So like his larger competitors, however, based on the feedback from this, he received on the platform, it was possible for him to align with his customers and also to make products that are great, service visible, and also to potential to build up that um, co company feedback through our platform. Next slide, please, Emma. Um, so, and in this way, Trustpilot became more than just reviews. So we're a platform for progress, um, a way companies can impress and improve and innovate by simply engaging and collaborating with consumers. Next slide, please, Heather. Thank you. So our main mission and our belief is we want to make the world a better place. Um, as cliche that it may sound, we believe that consumers are more powerful than ever before. And that is why we're focused on the data that we use to drive a lot of our decision making. And that's what our business model was based on. Um, and basically, it's, it's about what affects the consumers and it's about what drives their behaviours, which is why data solutions are important to us. Um, so just a little bit more about some cool stats on who we are and where we operate. So we're currently based in um, several different locations. So that includes Vinuous, Edinburgh, which we've just opened over the last two months. Um, and of course, Denmark, um, also New York and Denver, Melbourne, and of course, London as well. So currently at the moment, we are in we're represented in more than 80 countries and we have 82 million reviews. And our largest market at the moment to date is in the UK, which was another reason why we decided to open up the, um, the office in Edinburgh. So at the moment, we on Trustpilot, we approximately have at least uh, 360,000 merchants, which have been um, and at the moment, we are really trying to build out our paying customers. And again, we do this by driving solutions through data. Um, and this is why we're trying to build out more of our teams here. So just a little snapshot into a little bit more numbers about us and what we're doing and how we are um, sort of operating. And at the moment, we are using the view platform. So obviously, there are competitors out there. But... The reason why we do drive this is because we focus more on trust and transparency and also for detection, which is, again, why we've opened our office in Edinburgh. Um, and Heather, you can just skip past these two slides. Great. So we are hiring at the moment. Um, at the moment, we've actually filled out eight different roles in Edinburgh. So we've hired seven different data engineers, and we've also hired some junior developers. And we just go into the next slide, Heather. So our culture that we have in the office and really what we want to get across to potentials if they are looking to join us and apply for our positions is that we're a really diverse company. Um, we come from different backgrounds and educations and experiences. A lot of our engineers and also data analysts don't come from that traditional route. And that's okay. This isn't always what we're looking for. We're looking for people who are interested in learning, uh, people who are interested in being passionate and really driving the business forward. Um, you know, we're a really innovative company and we constantly strive to create solutions to challenge sort of the past and what we've done before. So the current openings that we have at the moment which I'm sure you're all interested in. So we have an ML engineer position. We have actually two times data analyst roles, and we are also looking for some junior developers and software engineers. Um, main focuses would be on business systems and also trust and transparency. So I think if anyone has any questions on, you know, what are we looking for in a profile? What type of candidate are we looking for? What the experience would be joining, obviously, in, you know, we're in a COVID-19 situation and you'd be joining virtually, what would that look like? Please ask away and then I can answer any questions pertaining to that.
just out of interest, Ruth, um, where about is the Edinburgh office? Um, so I can share the address. I haven't been to the Edinburgh office yet, um, but it is in the centre and it's not too far. It's the centre, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's in the centre. Okay, and um, we've got one question just asking how how people would go about applying for the jobs or where the job descriptions would be. Are they on your, are they on your website? Yeah, so if you just go to the next slide, actually there's some information there as well. Uh, yeah, okay. so you can reach out to me. So basically I'm the global recruiter for all the tech roles. So I my efforts are mainly based in Copenhagen also in London because we do have some data teams there and then we have one analyst currently based in New York. Um, the current open as I've said we're looking for data analysts based in London and in Edinburgh um, and also of course people can work remote. It's currently a policy that we're looking to build out but at the moment all of our offices are remote and of course if you do want to work in the office it's open um, but it's dependent on sort of the candidate and what they're sort of willing to do or not to do. Um, so yeah, if you want to apply for a role, you can go to our website, you can contact me directly on LinkedIn, um, or just drop me an email. Great, and we've got a question from Eleanor asking, what skills are you looking for your data analysts to have? So mainly the efforts that you'd be doing if you were a data analyst and if you did come on board, would be really working more with our customer success teams um, and also with our data scientists. Um, and the main side that you'd be working on would be fraud detection. So looking at the behavior on our platforms. Um, in terms of technical capabilities, that would of course be data visualization tools, uh, SQL, VBA. Um, so your, your normal sort of industry standard technologies is what we'd be looking for. Um, and I think that would be it. In terms of leveling, it would be someone who has had some hands-on experience if you haven't, again, we are looking to sort of build up the structure of our business because we are quite top heavy in terms of experience, um, obviously, because it did come from a startup and now we're scaling up. Um, so we're really looking for that entry level talent to build out our teams as well. Great. And, uh, and Ajith Saskin, and from the machine learning engineering perspective, what skills are you looking for there? What certain programming languages or cloud technologies? Or yeah, so again with the machine learning, um, basic technology, so it will be R, Python, some experience of AI if they do. Um, and then in terms of interview process, how that works is obviously you speak with me for a screening. The next stage would be a sort of co-challenge that you'd have with the hiring manager, we send it to you. And that would be to sort of see your technical capabilities hands on. Um, and then the final stage interview just to sort of explain the role, hear a little bit more about your experience as well. And all of these roles are available, are they advertised now on the Trustpilot website? They're all live to apply for now. Do they have closing yeah. dates or do they tend to just be open roles until you get who you want or? No, so ideally we're looking to fill out the roles at least within the next month. Um, so they're all open to apply now, they're all on the website. Um, and again, on the ML engineer, probably we're looking more for someone who's got that AWS, um, Airflow experience, Spark or BigQuery, uh, Confluent. So if you have experience using these different types of technologies, then this is the type of profile we'd be looking for. Anything else from anybody? I think it's great to see an organisation like Trustpilot coming over to Edinburgh. And, um, definitely. Yeah. So it's definitely an exciting time for us, I think. So are your, um, are your, is your talent in the Edinburgh or your employees at the Edinburgh office just now, are the majority of them new hires or are they people that you brought from other areas of the business to start up in Edinburgh? No, so everyone is a new hire in Edinburgh. So we've hired um, a lot of people who've come from Wood Mackenzie, um, some people from Skyscanner, and also in terms of our leadership team now, we have Steve Garland, who's our CTO. And so he's been in the business for a while. And then we also have Manos, 
Um, we also have Scott Henderson, um, who are the VPs of sort of trust and transparency, tools and systems, and of course the data and the analytics side as well. But everyone else in terms of engineering managers, um, data analysts, they're all going to be new. Um, so we're going to really build out a new culture there. Great. Okay. And at the moment, um, training and development opportunities for your junior roles coming in? Yeah. So as I said, because our business structure is quite top heavy um, in the rest of our locations, this is what we're working on in terms of development and opportunities. So we do offer 20% time, um, which I'm sure some of you would be familiar with. So if that's you wanted to learn a new technology, a new language, that's something we would support. And we are also working on our job architectures. So really trying to measure out how if you join a business at a certain level, how does that sort of journey look towards the end if you really want to get to, you know, from a software engineer level one to a software engineer level three, or from that to an engineering manager. So once you join, you would have sort of a track that you'd follow to be able to progress within the organization, um, whether if it was globally or, you know, if there was some mobility aspect to it and you were interested in working in different locations um, and really just interested in different parts of the business as well. Okay, great. And are you able to comment on kind of entry level salaries? Yeah. So in terms of entry level salaries within um, Edinburgh, do you mean specific numbers, Heather? Well, just a rate, yeah, within a range of where what, what you'd be yeah. looking at for junior engineers or for yeah, so that would range from anywhere between 35 up to about 47. And um, it would depend on what part of the business they were working on. Uh, if they were data analysts, it depends on what types of technologies that they're sort of familiar working with and how entry level they are, uh, but it would range between that amount. Yeah, does that tie in with when you talked about like the level one, two and three, does that tie in with those grades? You have kind of ratings for that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we've got our job architecture, which helps us identify where someone sits within that sort of salary bracket as well. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone, any final questions? Just give a couple of minutes to allow for the typing. No, nothing coming in. So, okay, well, thank you very much, Ruth, for your time. It's been really interesting to hear about the setup.